Hi everyone, this is your chess puzzler and a very warm welcome to the channel. What a start to the 2017 Singfield Cup. With three decisive results out of a total of five games, we couldn't have asked for more. Levon had no problem taking home his first win after Nepo allowed him to grab an important pawn on b7 on move 13 and from there it went pear shaped for the young Russian player. Another interesting game had been the one between Maxime Vasile Graf and aspiring world champion Wesley So. Going through an extremely popular line of the Italian opening, both players were confident until the game reached basically the end game. But let's go through this game to check it out. Maxime White shot off with e4 and with e5, knight f3, knight c6 and bishop c4, we had the Italian opening. One that is gaining very much popularity. It had been away for some time and now it has returned with a vengeance. Through bishop c5, castles, knight f6, d3, castles, a4, d6, c3, a6, allowing the bishop to escape just in case, we saw h3, h6, knight d2, bishop a7, rook e1, knight back to e7 with ideas of repositioning to g6, bishop b3, knight g6, and here Maxime bypassed the very normal and expected knight f1 and went for d4. Getting the rook to e8 allowed for the bishop to squeeze into c2, and now with bishop d7, Maxime went for another somewhat surprising move, a5. It is pointless to stick your bishop on b5 because c4 will have him sent back right where he came from. But of course, should this happen, once the pawn is moved forward, he can never return to his original square. With c6, the e-pawns were traded in, and now this knight here got himself a far better outpost. Queen e7 led to the queen coming on to d6, encouraging a trade-off. If you go for it, expect to see rook d7, and if you now grab the pawn on b7, with bishop takes h3, the recapture will drop the knight on b7, and this game is on. Up to a certain move order, we did see this variation, but after the knight took the queen, Wesley attacked the knight right away, and Maxime knew if now he took the poison pawn on b7, the knight will be trapped with a move like rook to b8. Maxime therefore went for rook d1, and now that the knight was secure on d6 and able to grab the pawn on b7, Wesley rushed in time and covered him up. Maxime here seems to have everything under control and was in no rush to jeopardize his position. The knight on f3 is well posted and the bishop pair are doing a great job. b4 would have been a great choice, but Vashir Lagrave played a rather weird move by getting his king to f1. Wesley, whether he liked it or not, had a problem with one of his pieces because his rook on e6 is very awkwardly placed because a possible bishop b3 will get the rook running. But if we come back a move or so, a bishop move to b3 would allow for a rather surprising relevation. But... Can you see what is happening? And if so, can you suggest the move, the most likely move for black in two, one, and pause? Bishop takes f2 with a check, and the question is whether to capture this bishop. You don't have to, but in case you do, prepare for this continuation. Can you see it? Rook takes knight on d6, and should you recapture... <coughs> and should you recapture the knight can come in by taking the pawn on e4 with a check and it will be goodbye rocky and of course the game as a result. And if we come back to this position, after all, 
this king move to f1 may clearly explain something. Rook e7 got the knight back to c4, and now with rook e8, Vasile Graf opted for b3. He somewhat expected the bishop to find e6, and when he did, Maxim shot off his knight to b6. Just to stop the bishop on a7 from getting into the action. Not sure this was the best move to go about it, but I'm sure this is what Maxime had in mind. He wanted to kick about this rook on e7 with a likely bishop move to a3 and wanted him to be misplaced to c7. Anyhow, this never went that far because Wesley removed the knight on b6 and it was here where the rook came in on d7, challenging the rook on d1. Bishop to e3 was spot on because it does not only allow the rooks to join up, but also protects any weaknesses this lonely pawn faces on b6. Rook c8 led to c4, and the exchange of rooks allowed for c5, and now we can begin to see the ideas behind the rook move to c8. It protects the c5 pawn and completely isolates the pawn on b6. Knight e1, knight e7, and now knight e3 added the pressure on this c5 pawn, but with neither player being able to do anything. Wesley strengthened the position of his e pawn through f6. Maxim had to find a way to get to the weak pawn on c5 and rushed his rook to a1. And now you can see the picture a bit clearer. Why Wesley didn't continue with a move like rook to c6 is not something I understand. He rather went for knight d7 and now with king e2 and king f7 we were ready to enter an endgame. We're not yet there. But you can consider this as a prep stage. King d2 was met by f5, trying to break open the king's side. This sharp move was met by an equally sharp response. Anyone? f4. Because if you now take first on e4, once the knight grabs the pawn on e5 with a check, once the knight comes off, this would go white's way, and you only need to look at white's pawn formation. And the fact that this pawn on e4 is as good as dead meat. White can also chase that black king should he decide to get in with a check. Sufficient to say, taking on e4 is a no-no. So instead, the pawn on f4 was removed, but with the immediate recapture, just look at how this knight springs to life. Wesley attacked the knight and knew his bishop on e6 was going to be traded in for his knight and this is exactly what happened. This variation did give white the edge and the game because after white came in with a check the recapture allowed a number of different variations. But first things first. By only looking at this position many of you might just find it better to play with the black pieces. Though there are five pawns versus five pawns, we know this pawn here on b6 is completely helpless and can be removed at leisure, in either case, with a rook each and two knights versus two bishops, what is going to be another war and an argument of what minor pieces are best to have. There is this fallacy that the bishop pair are stronger than two knights, but this is after all a fallacy because whether you have a knight or bishop, the value of each is three points. We know bishops are very strong in open positions because of the long range ability. But can you checkmate a lone king with two knights or only two bishops? In case you're wondering, you may wish to revisit two of my very old short clips on this to get your answers. Just do not allow a lone king versus two knights on the board because if your opponent is Chuck Norris, he would be the only player who can checkmate you. Okay, coming back to the game, Maxime went for, for the safety of his bishop and got him out of any exchange range by placing him on the very safe g1 square. Wesley was desperate to trade in his knights for the bishops and was even willing to compromise his own position to do this. He got his knight on d4 but with a check on e1 
after king f6, rook f1 check, king back to d7, and a fresh check on e1, Wesley had enough with the checks and got his king out of any further checks. Bishop e4 was the icing on the cake, and Maxime knew exactly what was going on. He allowed Wesley to grab the pawn with a check, knowing very well what followed next. King c3 pushed the knight back to d4, and now comes the largest silent killer move of them all. But before I reveal what Maxime came up with, can you find this move in two, one, and pause? Bishop h2, ending the game right on the spot. As you know, we can always help those viewers to understand what goes on by stretching this game just a bit further. If you take on b6, hitting on b7 will lead to a check through knight a4, but after king d3 and another check on b2, the king can move up the board, and once the checks end, the rook is trapped and it's game over. And it is as simple as that. And this is the very reason why Wesley resigned. At this point in the game, after f5, Wesley said he had miscalculated something and did fear the bishop pair was too strong for his two knights. Wesley also said right after his game that there are still eight other games and things do happen. With this tremendous Maxime victory, I know his early days, but a point is a point. Three players enjoy a tight lead, four players are on half a point each, and so Nepo and Svitler are scraping the very bottom of the barrel with zero points. And on this very note, many thanks for taking part, and many, many thanks for watching. Much more to follow very shortly. This was your chess puzzler.